Hello and welcome to this special show on ET Now. I'm Ridhu Bhandari and you are watching I Inspire 2015, an inclusive leadership conference. This event, organized by the Biz Divas Foundation, is a platform for innovative thoughts, ideas, and the celebration of diversity and entrepreneurship. Over the course of the day, we will hear from many dynamic women on various themes, some in the form of discussions, some inspirational talks, and even a theater act. So let's begin right away and witness some of the action. The day began early with an enthusiastic bunch of women from all walks of life signing up for the day-long sessions. Entrepreneurs, artists, corporate leaders and activists mingled over conversations to bring women's empowerment at the workplace to the fore. Welcome to the third edition of Bizdiva's annual Inclusive Leadership Conference, I Inspire 2015. The powerful thing we believe at Bizdiva's is that we can make a difference in this world. We all know that investing in women is a smart investment. In fact, for most organizations, it has become an economic and business imperative. Bizdiva's recognizes this, and we identify, invest, and bring visibility to these extraordinary women leaders across the region. We have trained, mentored, and invested in more than 2,000 plus women across all walks of life. These are the women who are striving to make an inclusive change every day. Inspiring inclusion begins with me. It begins with me taking action. It begins with the gesture that I'm willing to take that next step, hold somebody else's hand, no matter what the background, so that we could walk that next mile, not faster, but definitely further. Let's all inspire change today, change within ourselves, change within the people around us, for a better inclusive world. All the best for the day, Intayat. Thank you. The first discussion of the day centered on gender initiatives that keep men in the fold. Industry veterans from several leading firms participated with their inputs on promoting diversity and inclusion seamlessly in the work environment. See, the, it's... The role of women has changed tremendously over the last 10 years, I would say, and this is because of the outcome of the way the business has moved. So the business has moved from capital investment to intellectual capital, wherein every organization is looking at the next big idea, and that can only come about by co-creation, engagement, and other things, which I believe women have far more intrinsic quality to be managing these kind of issues and challenges compared to men, and hence, there is a huge demand in the corporate world to include, to have diversity around gender as well. I, I think it, there is uh, a clear awareness uh, that's getting established uh, across the world uh, in terms of the importance of providing this opportunity, uh, creating awareness amongst men equally, as much as, uh, you know, uh, getting the women to be uh, realizing, self-realizing that there is a certain agenda that they can actually achieve. Uh, it's equally important for men and women to be, uh, you know, addressing this and not just one side of it. And equally, the corporate as to what they can do to make this really work. Uh, so I think it, it's, it's a combination of the three that actually ultimately makes it uh, work. There is still uh, some distance to go. While I think directionally it has moved well, uh, in recent times most corporates are improving this percentage of gender diversity uh, and, and I think uh, in the years to come it is bound to be much better. So we are in that right phase of uh, uh, you know, the, the positive uh, direction that it's taken. Uh, but having said that, it is still varying across industries. So uh, if you take the corporate world, there are, com there are in sectors and industries that uh, are very, very abysmally low at around uh, single digit percentages of uh, women in that uh, or next to nothing. And, and there are uh, sectors which are in the teens and there are uh, sectors who are almost one third. But I think we, we still need to sort of go to the uh, halfway mark which uh, some, some industries, some service sector, IT sector, are quite uh, potent, they have the potential to take it there. And, and I think we, we need to sort of tap that. So the panel discussion was essentially focusing on how men can get involved in the agenda of uh, diversity. And I think the two key messages in the end that we came up with are for men, get involved in the agenda, don't sit on the sidelines, but get actively involved. And for women, take ownership of your career, 
people are putting on a lot of effort, companies are putting in place a lot of policies, frameworks to make it work and therefore put up your hand and say, I will take ownership of my career and use the opportunities that organizations provide you right now. Next up was an inspiring and illuminating keynote address by President of the National Commission for Women, Dalita Kumar Mangalam. Sharing inspiring anecdotes and examples, she called for change in mindsets and struck a chord with the audience. We need to know, there are two, three things. As fortunate we must, uh, women, we must learn to play it forward. We need to also make the space for and give encouragement to and mentor if necessary, women who have the competence uh, to come up in life in whatever way we can, whether it's economic, whether it's in the workspace, whether it's just as a str one stranger to another who can help them out of trouble. So that's a very important thing because without that sort of camaraderie or without that sort of uh, networking, for want of a better word, many women falter because they don't get the opportunity. I also said that men and women have to be equal in this uh, inclusion agenda because uh, it's not just men who are part of patriarchy but women, equal number of women also are. I don't want to call them anti other women but uh, enough women also are uh, oppressive or um, you know want other women to remain in the uh, sort of status quo and not allow them to move forward. So we need to acknowledge that times are changing, that enough number of men, there are sufficient number of men who are understanding of the fact that women can be competent in the workplace also, because we are talking really about entrepreneurship and business today, and are willing to give them a chance. In fact, I think I quoted the example of Chanda Kochar, who was mentored by her boss before her, and who saw her potential, and look where she is today. So we need to also include men in inclusion. So those were some insightful words from the President of the National Commission for Women. The Biz Divas Foundation in partnership with IIM Ahmedabad is for the first time launching a report on inclusion in India Inc. right here at this very platform. So let's go and find out what that report is all about and what are its broad findings. The study actually interviewed 21 organizations across different industries and what we were looking at is who is being included and what is being done to include and we found largely it is gender it's women whose uh, journey is being looked at and then there are uh, pockets which are looking at age and culture okay different regional uh, things also uh, what we found was that in most organizations it's still at infancy the the whole journey is in infancy people are trying to struggle to find out how to make people more inclusive one of the key things is that the top management commitment really makes a difference as to whether uh, inclusion becomes part of the discourse or not um, and um, and the other thing we found was that um, inclusion uh, is still you know it, it's still being understood as getting more different people in the organization uh, we still need to move towards once these people are there how do they actually start to perform so that's the question that's what we uh, what I could say is possibly the um, key finding well it's time to take a short break right now on the other side we'll get you lots more action from I inspire 2015 stay with us only on ET now Welcome back to I Inspire 2015, an inclusive leadership conference only on ET Now. Over 250 participants are here today to showcase their innovative ideas and practices and share their success stories. From authors to corporate women leaders to women from the non-profit sector, this platform is truly a confluence of numerous ideas on women's empowerment. Take a look. 
the day progressed, the spotlight turned to the work-life balance that every individual must implement. The focus was clearly on making the most of the inherent strengths of both men and women, regardless of the differences. Uh, one of the things that we spoke about was uh, the fact that uh, you know nobody can have it all. It's about what you want. And uh, you know, if you are aligned to what you want, uh, definitely you can have it all. Uh, but you know, I think this is a gender neutral question because uh, men also have the same challenge as women. So that was one of the key things that came out. Up ahead were more stimulating expressions by women of influence from across the spectrum. From theater to literature, Business to the armed forces, a comprehensive dialogue ensued covering a wide variety of aspects related to honing women's leadership skills and fulfilling their aspirations. Oh, this discussion was basically on women on influence and why we're not seeing women uh, in the top leadership roles. However, with my organization being in the Indian Air Force and the Defense Services, we like leaders made to be leaders right from the first day we get inducted. So it was the talk and discussion was all about that, how women can get up, what is the organization, how the organization can help women to be leaders. It um, brought out different dimensions of, uh, of working in the corporate world and achieving. And um, also um, from, the, from the other panelists, um, it was amazing to see how all of us um, do different things but uh, the one thing that binds us together is aspiration and a belief in ourselves that we uh, set our own, um, our own boundaries and then we set our own goals and we achieve them and then goalpost moves, uh, we move it forward. Well, it's time to head into another short break, but join us back because on the other side, we'll bring you the I Inspire Leadership Awards 2015. Stay with us on ET Now. Welcome back to I Inspire 2015, an inclusive leadership conference by the Biz Divas Foundation only on ED Now. Next up, we have two inspiring talks coming up, one with author Naveen Gulia and the other one with the founder of NAS Foundation, Anjali Gopalan. Let's listen in. Tackling issues from overcoming overwhelming challenges in life to fighting gender bias and identity crisis the iTalks provided a platform for some courageous speakers to share their stories and those of others to motivate and inspire. Naveen Gulia, author, adventurer and social worker, talked about beating the odds to achieve his dreams, while Anjali Gopalan of the NAS Foundation shed light on the power of embracing oneself. I think if we look at uh, the changes that have happened in the last few years, of course we see a lot of, lot more women heading institutions uh, or even in the corporate world, we see a lot more women, that doesn't mean there are enough women, but we are seeing more women that who are heading in uh, corporations than before. Uh, does that mean that the, most women have been effectively been able to break the glass barrier? I don't think so. I still think uh, there is a lot of uh, resistance to uh, women being, a being, being able to go up the ladder. Um, I think they have to be 10 times better than men even today to be able to do that. I think the more we are able to understand that um, it's the qualities of an individual, not their gender, which matters, that's when we'll see change. Um, We'll see change when we teach our young to learn to respect each other. Because I think respect is a very learned behavior. And, uh, and values are something that have really to be taught to young people so that they learn to respect each other. Um, because I think one of the things that became very clear to me when I 
went to live outside this country was that that was a huge lacuna. We are never taught to respect diversity. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are taught to believe in class. That's how we live our lives. And I think that's where the change needs to happen. Well, I Inspire is a platform not just for sharing ideas and success stories, it's also a platform that recognizes people who are contributing significantly to the cause of women's empowerment. So let's now find out who the winners of the I Inspire Leadership Awards are for this year. I Inspire Leadership Awards is about honoring and celebrating the leaders who are making the world inclusive every day. Today, we have four categories of awards. The Women Rights Award, the Young Trailblazer Award, the Social Innovation Award, the Diversity and Inclusion Award. Let's come to the first award, which is the Women's Rights Award. The Women's Rights Award honors a leader who takes action to protect and restore the rights, safety, and dignity of all people, especially women and girls who have been exploited by gender-based violence and have shown exemplary leadership skills and innovation to create ripple effects in the women's rights issue. She or he is a leader of high integrity, extreme passion, and are individuals who have contributed significantly, often against great odds and at a great personal risk, to advance the rights of women and girls and to increase awareness of the injustices women face on account of their gender. We would like to call on stage Samir Chadha, CEO of Barclays, to come and give away the award, please. The, the lady that I am going to be awarding clearly, I think, lives in the other half of India, right? And she works, you know, actively in that. I have to say that it is a deep privilege that I'm actually giving this award out. And I, you know, the lady in question, her name is Preeti Patkar, ma'am. If you could just stand up, please give her a big round of applause. Every award uh, makes you feel, uh, you makes actually makes you feel that your work is being recognized. Uh, it also makes you feel good because uh, the invisible community, the excluded community that you've been working with for so many years, uh, you do feel they are getting recognized. So, yeah, and uh, every award, uh, you also get a great platform to share your work to share about the lives of these women and children. So definitely it, it always feels good to, to receive awards. So moving on to the next award, the Social Innovation Award. The Social Innovation Award recognizes an innovative leader who finds solution to expand economic opportunities, relieve poverty, or increase the financial inclusion of marginalized communities. These are the individuals who attract, support, and inspire some of the most innovative, high-impact social entrepreneurship in India. GE has been one of the foremost champions in the area of inclusion. They promote a culture of leadership and diversity to drive innovation and productivity. I would like to invite on stage Tejal Patil, General Counsel GE India, to please give away this award. Business Divas is proud to present the I Inspire Leadership Award for Social Innovation to this extraordinary man, Mr. A. Muruganantham, a man truly with his vision, changing the world for women. I'm happy so being a woman forum. They are very generous. They call it man then they are giving an award. So really I'm happy to receive an award from my sisters. Uh, that will encourage, because our mission is creating not less than a million employment for poor women only in India. And we are trying to convert India into 100% sanitary napkin country from the current level of less than 5%. So we now quickly move to the third award, the Diversity and Inclusion Award. The Diversity and Inclusion Award recognizes an individual for his or her efforts aimed at promoting diversity awareness a representation and inclusion within India corporate. She or he would have shown a passionate commitment towards DNI agenda other than their own KRAs and have been influencing their organizational team and stakeholders consistently to adopt an inclusive culture. Capgemini has been associated with I Inspire since 2012 and has supported us in our beliefs over the last three years. They've also partnered with us in taking out two back to back research reports and other corporate networking group initiatives be it the mentoring walk around tables or I inspire. 
We would now like to call on stage Dayanand Alapuri, Head of HR for uh, BPO Capgemini, to come on stage and give away the award. Ms. Divas and Capgemini together are proud to present this to uh, I Inspire Leadership Award to Dilip Kumar Ganta for diversity and inclusion. It's quite overwhelming. Uh, I never uh, anticipated that what work I'm doing uh, will get me such kind of recognition. And uh, when I could see the other participants and other awardees, uh, it's quite uh, a great, a delightful experience. Um, and uh, it makes me really nice that uh, in my work, which, uh, which I've done in my own organization, is getting recognized uh, in the rest of the country as well. And uh, hopefully this becomes an imp inspiration for other uh, male colleagues who are in the sales and marketing uh, domain uh, who would uh, take up this uh, uh, initiative forward and would have more uh, women working in different uh, fields of uh, uh, market. The next award actually, um, the Young Trailblazer Award recognizes a young pioneer whose vision, contribution and leadership has broken through barriers and brought people together to take action that hastens shared progress. Barclays who has also been a sponsor for second year running and it has been two straight years since they have associated with I Inspire. We thank Barclays for supporting us and believing in our vision. I would now like to call on State Saru, who is the HR head for Barclays Shared Services on stage to give away this award, the Young Trailer Blazer Award. I'm proud to present the Biz Divas I Inspire Leadership Award for Sonal for a Young Trailblazer Award. She had the courage and the determination to tread the path which many of us would not even think of. We've been working for about last five years now. Um, and I think uh, a platform like this pretty much gives so much more impetus to the cause that we are fighting for. Honestly, it's not about the organization or me per se, you know, who's getting the award. But I think, honestly, if I, you know, if I say or if I, you know, put it into words that at the end of the day, if the cause of child abuse gets highlighted through an award or platform like this, which is fascinating because you end up meeting women, you end up meeting mentors, you end up meeting people as mentees, you know, you end up meeting people who are, in, you know, who would want to invest in a cause like that emotionally, financially, and, you know, so much more in terms of networks. So I think as a platform, it's, it's fascinating. So Bisdiva started I Inspire in 2012 and we started with the idea that we wanted to celebrate the spirit of diversity and inclusion. We wanted to celebrate the spirit of women leadership. We wanted to celebrate that India as a diverse country has so many entrepreneurs and so many amazing stories to tell. We wanted to have a common platform where we are able to voice or give voice to many such leaders, many such stories where people can connect with each other know each other, inspire each other, as well as they are able to support each other. The I Inspire Leadership Awards was to actually recognize, acknowledge, as well as, you know, take inspiration from these role models. And uh, we had a panel of jury. Uh, we had some eminent personalities who were in the jury uh, selection. We had invited for application. Some of them we, invite, we personally invited as well because we knew some of the stories from the earlier, our own connections. We reached out to the networks, we reached out to corporates, we reached out via social media for people to nominate these kind of stories. And some amazing stories have come up. It was very, very difficult. It was a tough job for the panel to actually select them. Um, none of the stories was something which we could turn it down. And we realized that there's so many stuff to sell. And I, I hope that I Inspire Leadership Awards will only keep growing from here and we'll be able to bring many such inspiring stories, many such inspiring role models for us to bring in front of the people so that everybody can not only support them, but actually take inspiration and bring in a change again from their own personal choice as well. Well, that brings us to the end of this special show on I Inspire 2015. Hope you enjoyed all the discussions and insights. Until next time, it's goodbye.